Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Jantz. My guest today is Laura Goldberg. She's the Chief Marketing Officer at Constant Contact. Before Constant Contact, she served as the Chief Revenue Officer for Cabbage, a leading cash flow management and data platform for small businesses acquired by American Express. Prior to that, she was the Chief Marketing Officer at LegalZoom and has held leadership roles in product and operations with leading e-commerce companies such as the NFL and Napster. So long line of marketing officer jobs. Welcome to the show, Laura. Thank you for having me. So let's start there with CMO role. Um, in the span of uh, your career as a CMO, how, how's that role evolved? I have a lot of leadership folks in marketing. And I always like to ask when I get that chance for you, how's that role evolved? It's evolved a lot. And in fact, um, I don't have any of the cred of, of sort of building my way up through marketing. I built my early career was in finance mm. um, and product and sort of operations slash general management. And you know, it's funny when I was offered my first marketing role, I was like, I'm not a marketer. Why do you want to hire me? And, you know, the answer was we need someone who thinks about the customer and someone who is numbers oriented. And so, you know, specifically on your question, I think the role has evolved, certainly ha as internet marketing has involved, as e-commerce has involved to having to balance both, you know, what we think of as traditional marketing brand and image and, and what do we look like and what messaging are we conveying, but coupled with how are we doing? What's the ROI on our spend? Sure. How are we using, you know, media dollars, email, text, the messaging in our product to acquire, engage, and retain our customers. And so 20 years ago, no one would have hired me as a CMO, yeah. but now as um, what's expected has changed and maybe shifted it a bit, um, it's perfect role. Well, and, and you know what's so funny? I mean, I, I'm talking to chief marketing officers now that um, actually roles that were traditionally in HR are falling under them, you know, the employer branding and even you know, right. diversity plays, you know, I mean, uh, our, you know, I think the role is, and, and just the fact that you spent time as a chief revenue officer, you know, I think is, I mean, there are a lot of organizations that think maybe marketing ought to go there. Um, right. So uh, if you were, if you were sitting in front of a room of peers, um, what would you tell them that you think the missed opportunities are in, in the marketing, especially in the chief marketing uh, officer role? I think marketers sometimes sell themselves short in terms of strategy and analytics, right? And so, and, and, and you know, it, it all depends on the story you want to hear. They, they are sometimes the less interesting stories, but, you know, I think marketing, particularly in commerce led companies, right? It, it very much depends on the company has a role that is strategic across functions and is really driving through revenue and top line the PL, right? It, it's usual marketing is driving the revenue, yeah. right? It's generally the bulk of the non-human costs, right, of it and a pretty large portion other in my world other than tech and maybe support of the human costs. And so you know, I think there's an opportunity for marketers to sort of step into that, you know, broader voice, if you will, of the strategic direction of whatever company they're in. So, so we're in agreement that every department should report to marketing then. Right. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about email. Um, email as a channel has certainly matured uh, over the last, yes. I don't know, let's say 20 years for sure. What do you, when you talk about email now, kind of what's the state of email marketing kind of in the overall mix today? Uh, I think you're right. It's um, uh, sophisticated, middle-aged. I don't know how, how we, how we'd um, say that it's, but it is, I mean, like always tried and true, you know, when we survey customers, like we just did in our small business now, 
survey, when we ask people how they want to hear from the small businesses that they do business with, they say email, right? Over half of them say email. And, and I think it's comfortable if it's from someone you know, someone you've opted into or, or a company you've opted into, it's there. You open it, you look at it, right? Open open rates are high. The, IRO, the ROIs are high. Now, it is low dollar to get into. I also think it. we think of email marketing as like the siloed thing. I send you an email with a coupon in it and you either click on it and transact or not. But it's kind of the gateway to lots of things. So I may send you a happy birthday email just because, right? Um, I may use email as a way to get you to sign up for an event that I'm having. And then you go to the event and you know, your affinity for my company or my product increases. You know, we use email to confirm that you've signed up for a list, right? There's, I think we think of it as, oh, email marketing. I offer you something and you respond or you don't, but it is this much broader communication channel that, you know, I kind of view as the you know, the, the center point of everything you're doing now, you may also do advertising or SMS or other kinds of marketing. Um, but it's really this key part and it's just, it's such a, I don't want to say easy, nothing, you know, it's it relatively has that relatively easy and low risk to get started. Since you mentioned SMS, um, I kind of want to throw that in there because I'm seeing a lot of people moving, like for me, example, I'm not, I'm a terrible example because I'm a boomer who like thinks like a millennial, right? Uh, when it comes to some of this stuff, but you know, particularly younger audiences, I mean, they would actually rather like, they want to schedule that appointment and get the reminder yes. and like never talk on the phone. They want to text. Um, so, so how is SMS as a preferred behavior channel, you know, now impacting your thinking as an email uh, channel? Right. So um, we agree. We think it's very, very important. Um, you know, um, we see that SMS are, is becoming a little more um, used in the small business space, still nowhere near as much as email. But, um, you know, when you talk to consumers, right, something like 83% of them um, read texts that are sent to them by a business. And, you know, it's generally with uh, positive feelings about it, right? Almost 75% are say things like it's helpful. Now, I do think you have to balance that how much of it is functional. I need an appointment, remind me my appointment, right. you know, maybe send me that MPS survey um, versus, you know, buy now, et cetera. So, I think marketers need to find that balance, but it is absolutely growing in importance and we need to make it easier and easier for small businesses to get started with SMS. The hurdles are a little higher um, than email, right. but you know we added it to our offerings in August and we're mm. super excited about it. We think all of our businesses would benefit from implementation. You, you know, I, th I think it's like a lot of things. I mean, if you have a, mar a segment of your market of your client base, that that's how they want to communicate, then you have to be there. It's just a gap Correct. if you're not right. Um, all right, let's go to another technology. Um, how is AI going to uh, impact what you're doing in constant contact? And then, you know, you see a lot of people AI washing right now. Yes. Um, you know, so, you know, how is it really going to make a meaningful impact in terms of learning? <laughs> Um, right. You know, well, so <laughs> I, I think that's so learning is exactly the right frame, because if you think about the data that we have from the billions of emails that right. our customers send out, the responses that opens, you know, you can learn about what works. And so I think a lot of the applications for AI are around, you know, they run the gamut from as simple as you know, subject line suggesting, right? You may type something and uh, an engine can say back to you, oh, this line might be better. There are certainly ways to test, right? Yeah. Um, what, what you're sending out to people. And then I think really interesting more around like list segmentation. When should I send you 
the next email, right? Maybe you're an occasional buyer. Can I space my emails? Or maybe you tend to buy on Fridays, right? So can we send emails around that? So I think there's a lot of ways in terms of list segmentation, when to send, what messages to send. And then also it, AI gives you a way to personalize, right? You can say, you know, John, you may like the red sweater. I really like a green sweater, wh- however. So there are a lot of great um, applications that can be applied to email and other um other parts of the digital marketing platform. I mean, is that currently on the Concept Contact roadmap to to have more of that kind of learning uh, technology built in? Yeah, and and we have some of it now. You know, I I do not like in our to our customer marketing saying things like AI powered because it doesn't mean anything, right? But it's like subject line suggestions, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, smart reporting and things like that. So it's yeah, absolutely yeah. sort of part and parcel what we do. I, you know, it's, I think how you market it is yeah. another interesting, yes. like it's a very, I think it's a very investor buzzwordy and it's, yeah. but it's, it's, uh, you think about like the Intel inside, if you will, right? right? <laughs> Which is like, I, I try in our marketing to market the benefits of what our product does yeah. as opposed to the, the sausage making. Yeah, it's real tempting, I think, for the tech space because, you know, yeah. we sit around in bubble and we talk about this stuff and um, we think it's cool. But, you know, the tip, constant context, you know, built literally on like real small businesses, the backs of real small businesses, and they could care less. You know, they just wanted to do solve the problem that they want <laughs> solved. And so I think it actually gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think as long as you benefit, like, you know, we're going to save you time. We're going to make your emails right. more effective. We're going to improve right. your ROI. Then you're, ta- then you're talking about the right things. That's right. Because now you're solving my problem with it. Exactly. One of the trends, if you will, um, that, that I'm seeing, we swung so far to digital <laughs> that I'm actually seeing a return to, I mean, who gets mail anymore, right? Um, I'm yes. seeing a return to some more I don't even want to call them traditional because digital is traditional now. So let's say hybrid. Um, right. What are, what are some of the effective ways that you've seen people merging, you know, digital and non-digital? Yeah. Um, I So um, we don't do um, a lot of it at Constant Contact, but at Cabbage, we were big direct mailers. And, yeah. you know, it's interesting when you don't get as much mail, you actually see the mail that you get. It's interesting. I I just got one from Cabbage from Constant Contact. Um, So poor uh, poor targeting, but, um, (laughs) you know, interesting that, and and that's what worked for us was like that letter, you know, that looks like the bank was sending it. So I think there's a lot of opportunities. Look, we um, at Constant Contact, at Cabbage, at LegalZoom, we use, linear television, you know, it's more news and sports, but it still gets watched. And, you know, and if you're talking news, live sports, there's less recording of that, right? So people are watching. Um, So I, I think there is an opportunity to blend those things look people still go to trade shows um you know so i i think it's always healthy to keep an open mind to what worked in the past what's coming in the future and how do you balance how do you balance those things because i don't know anyone who's successful just marketing one way yeah i mean as goofy as it sounds because a decade ago we were talking about qr codes and we were kind of laughing at (laughs) like how people jumped into them and now you know, simple thing like sending out a postcard with a QR code to subscribe to a newsletter or to donate to a, a nonprofit or, you know, or to get a personalized video. I mean, that kind of blending, I think, is is really, really effective. A hundred percent. We ran an outdoor campaign where, yeah, yeah. you know, you're on bus, um, bus stops and we had a QR code there and there was right. special content and, and fun stuff. So absolutely. 
it, it, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, they kind of died out and then the pandemic basically made them, yes. <laughs> you know, right. real again. You right. You can't go to a restaurant can't, anymore. Can't order your food, care. right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So now everybody knows how to use, you know, that was always one of the hurdles was you had to get like a, a you know, a reader, you know, to do it first. And I mean, it was like when podcasting first started, you know, people, it was just as hard to get people to listen as it was to produce a show, you know, but then once it became ubiquitous, right. it was like, you know, podcasting took off. Let's talk about trust because, it, it, you know, I know that, that um, I know that at Constant Contact, you guys talk a lot about building trust, you know, with yes. email, but it's also an amazing way to erode trust, you know? So, <laughs> so how do you, um, you know, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that a lot of people, because we get so much spam, uh, we get so much stuff we didn't, you know, ask for. So that's, you know, our trust is way down on, you know, on brands necessarily, you know, on email or a lot of channels. How do you, you know, how do you use this channel to actually build trust? Yeah. So I would say a couple of things. So one, it helps um, that we serve the small business market, right? I think when you look at yeah, those, yeah. do you trust these brands? It's definitely skewed to bigger brands. And, you know, in our small business now survey, you see this amazing propensity of consumers to want to want to support small businesses. So that just helps in general. You know, Constant Contact has been in this business for a long time, right? Which is a plus and a minus, but we're really good at, e at delivering email. You know, yeah. we are very good about email hygiene about, you know, making sure like you can't buy a list and put it in constant contact, right? You have to grow your own list. Mm -hmm. um, and we offer a lot of services and whether it's through humans or articles um, about how to email, how to construct a good email, how often to email, et cetera. And, you know, our, our customers are amazing. They're really they're really great about it. And, you know, if you, it, it's, it's like any trust relationship, right? If you, as a small business owner, respect your customers, they will respect and trust you back. Right, and right. so I, I know it sounds potentially simplistic, but, you know, that's how you build trust in, in any situation. Just don't do crappy marketing. Okay. Correct. Uh, <laughs> um, is there a gener have you noticed a generational difference in terms of what I want from email? Um, so like does Gen Z particularly want something different than, you know, all the way up to maybe my generation? Yeah. I mean, look, I think your, I'll say are, um, and I don't know what the exact age cutoff is, Yeah, uh, you know, the, the older generations are definitely reading their email right? And they're on top of it. I think the younger ones are more, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I got to that today, you know, and oh, I have to, right? It's, it's not urgent. But I think that's okay, right? If it's urgent, if it's like, hey, your package is outside, come get it. That's text, right? But if it's a, hey, we're having this sale for a week, if you don't read that immediately, that's okay. But they still read it. You know, it's, um, I, I'm not sure you're having like a two way uh, conversation through email, but it gets read and it and it gets processed. I think it might just be on a different time frame. Well, and can we also make other very broad generalizations <laughs> and say like, shorter is better? A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. That, I think that's true for everyone. I always joke, like, if I, don't, if I can't get the gist in this much, like, yeah. you've lost me. So I think it's, you know, graph, you know, visual, visually arresting, to the point, relevant, personalized, right? I think that's not even generational, right? Yeah. That's, that's what matters, no matter what. And, um, you know, those are, those are the important things, no matter how old you are, or, or frankly, what the medium is. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably too late if you're listening to this show right now, but I'm going to ask Laura anyway, what should we be doing as e email marketers for the holidays? <laughs> it's not too late. Um, <laughs> now is the perfect time, though. It's so interesting not to keep bringing up our survey, but 
we did find that people are like on it earlier. Like you see advertising earlier and earlier, but people yeah. are um, getting on holiday. I think it's one, you know, you want to engage your customers and, and remind remind them that you're there and, and the great offers that you have. I think you also want to assure some, re reassure people. I always think about this, like, should I buy this now or should I wait for the big sale that's going to be mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving, right? Uh, like reassure them that like, you know, th this is great and this is great for you at the right time. Um, and to just be, I think the other thing is, particularly if you're in a retail business, being operationally ready for yeah, yeah. the urgency, speed, and then sometimes, uh, I don't know, not great behavior that happens around uh, happens yeah. around the holidays. Well, and I was half kidding being too late, but, but just it just feels like, you know, the big yeah. players are, you know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, uh, sometime in October. Um, and it, it, it can feel like the holidays just get pushed on us uh, so much uh, sooner. Right. Agreed. Well, Laura, I appreciate you stopping by the duct tape marketing podcast and sharing some thoughts on the, the state of email. Is there any, uh, anywhere you want to invite people to connect with you or, or uh, check out constant contact? Yeah. People should check out constant contact, constantcontact.com, And, um, we are there to answer questions and I am Laura Goldberg, pretty easily findable on, uh, on LinkedIn. Awesome. 